Well, hey, happy Monday. Happy Monday. He doesn't know our thing. I forgot. So he doesn't know our thing. Normally, that's our <laughs> intro. So I should have told him. My bad, guys. But yeah, normally me and Jason um, always go, well, happy Monday. And sometimes it's cold and I don't want to say happy Monday. But it's warm. It's so warm. It's it, nice. It's a nice happy Monday. It so is a happy Monday. Awesome. So I, we have Jay with us uh, today. Obviously, Jay uh, preached yesterday um, in our variety pack talking about prayer. And so we've got him here this morning to kind of unpack that sermon and uh, just talk a little bit more about stuff. But before we do that, Jay, how about you introduce yourself to our listening audience and let them know a little bit about you and your family and maybe a little bit more about what you do um, sure. with yeah. Mustard Seed. Yeah. So Jay Greer, married to Caitlin Greer, who used to be Caitlin Vallely. Um, So plenty of relatives running around Prescott. i uh, been here. Uh, her family's been here for forever, it seems, and so uh, deep roots in the community there. I had not heard of Prescott 20 years ago and so <laughs> uh, until I had a girlfriend who was from there. And then, um, you know, I really have come to love this place and love visiting and all that. Uh, so we met at Bible College, Ozark Christian College um, in Missouri, uh, where where I was living. I lived in uh, Denver, near Denver, Colorado, Longmont, Colorado, uh, through elementary school long enough to become a Broncos fan, which I mentioned in the sermon, which is pretty important uh, to mention. Man, I'm a Raiders um, fan, so when you said it, a little bit know, of me you, died inside. Okay, this is getting weird. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, uh, you know, born in Oklahoma, whatever, so that's my, you know, move around kind of life. Um, and then it was all junior high and high school and then college in southwest Missouri, and that's where uh, Caitlin made the big, like, journey of faith from <laughs> Arizona to Southwest Missouri. Uh, we met the very first day. Um, and then, uh, yeah, I got married 2005 here, UCYC. We were married at UCYC. That's cool. Yeah. And um, last day of 2005. And uh, mm. we had a... Um, You're one of those people. One of those people. <laughs> I was I'm like, God, people married kind of in the holiday. You're asking me to give up a lot the for you. You know, it was a good idea at the time. Now my now my anniversary is always on uh, New Year's Eve. So yeah. it's, you know, it's funny now. Yeah. Um, but <laughs> and you're celebrating always with other people. It's true. Yeah. It's true. Yeah. Um, and so we... Um, yeah, we got married and then had a couple more years, like a year and a half left of college, uh, after that, um, through college, I was a, a part-time youth minister and then associate pastor at a church that was a hour drive away from the school. So had a lot of time to learn how to preach and do ministry there. Yeah. And then we moved to Japan in 2008. We graduated in 2007. So, wow. Um, we, we've been married for 17 years. We've been in Japan for 15 years. Wow. So that's the big story. All of our kids have been born there. Uh, they're now, uh, it goes boy, boy, girl, boy, 14, 12, 10, 8. We can count by twos that's right how now. That's how we do it. It's an even number. Oh, year. I just roll everybody. When the first one moves, I move them all up. Okay. That's actually so, good. Yeah. So we have now uh, my six-year-old, he's first in the calendar. So I just move them all odd together and even together. So when he changes, they all change. It all changes. Because it makes it so much easier to go do, 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 do. Exactly. And during the middle of birthday season, it's a mess. It's like, ah, uh, yeah. I think he's seven. And two people look at you when you go, yeah, I got a six-year-old and a seven-year-old. And they're like. How'd that happen? Oh, goodness. Yeah. <laughs> like a lot of judgment, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no. So it's fun. We like having a big, uh, big family. Um, Is that, so let me just ask that. It's curious. Yeah. Is that typical in Japan? It is not. Yeah, so you guys probably stick out it even more not. so. Yeah, um, we do. Uh, so, yeah, was, no one has ever mistaken me for a Japanese person. Probably so, not. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, there's there's that. We stand out a bit there. But also, yeah, uh, larger than than most in terms of family. And, um, you know, the average household is getting smaller and smaller in Japan. Really? People aren't getting married, so they're not having kids. Man. Um, population of Japan is, is declining, um, rapidly. Um, so, um, it's in the next few decades, 2050, 2060, we're going to have 40 million less Japanese people for 40 million fewer. So, um, it's, a wow. yeah, it's a really kind of like an emergency level situation for the country over there. Really? Um, and so that's one of those social issues they're facing where they can, you know, uh, they're trying to throw all kind of financial incentives to just say, hey, have kids, have kids. Really? Kids. And uh, yeah, so all of our kids are born there for free, right? Um, it's a big, 
you know, because they want you to have kids. They want you to have them. Um, but no matter what financial incentives they're throwing at people, they cannot get the populace to get married and have kids. And mm. because, um, you know, we, we know we're sitting over here looking at the world through a biblical lens and seeing here's God's design for family, yeah. um, for, you know, uh, multiplying, you know, marriage is his de- his design is is there for how to thrive in his world. Um, when you run away from that and become disconnected from that, and look uh, and distort God's plan for sex, and look for these things in other places, you see things start to crumble. So that's that's kind of a different kind of different topic, but that's some of just wow. what's going on in Japan. Yeah, is, definitely uh, a real you know a, a need for for um, for direction towards God's blueprints for the world. Yeah. We well, and again, so let's chat about kind of Japan and the work you do. I know yesterday you mentioned a little bit, but mm. even every time I hear it, it is staggering the percentage of people who do not believe. Yeah. So what is that percentage again? So it's less than 1%, uh, depending on which you read, you know, um, some people are going to say as low as, uh, 0.4, 0.5, something like that. Um, uh, but you know, we usually just say less than 1%. Um, yeah. It's 0.2 percent are in church every Sunday, and so okay. that's that's part of the important piece of it. Is not all the Christians who are there um, are actively on mission. Okay, um, and so you know a missions term unreached. Yeah. So you have an unreached uh, people group or country where it's less than two percent Christian, and the idea behind unreached is there's not enough of uh, a uh, a Christian base, the church there in that place is not strong enough to reach its own people. So uh, when you have that, you say, okay, you need help from outside. I gotcha. And so that's what we're really seeing is most pastors are nearing retirement age, about 70% of pastors are nearing retirement age. Um, There's a lot of churches that are pastorless. The average church size is 30, but that's deceiving in itself because it's 60 to 70% of churches are, are 15 people or less. And then you have these mega churches, a few mega churches of seventy. Yeah, and um, you know, there's there's just not enough churches. There's there's not enough pastors, and there's a need for a multiplication of disciples in a huge yeah. way. Yeah. Most of the problems that we have in the church in Japan, uh, where there's, uh, it would just all be solved through evangelism. If we have more Christians. We're going to have more people who rise up to be leaders. We're going to have more right. people who rise up to do ministry. We're going to have more people uh, give and be generous. Um, and so we really try to focus in on how do we take the 99% of Japan that's not heard? How do we share the gospel with them and see who responds? And yeah. that's the heart of the ministry. And which is so different, again, in our context. I know most of us, it's not, I mean, we are becoming, as a country, more and more uh, people are walking away from faith uh, or just have no religious affiliation. But even within that number, they've probably heard the gospel, at least in pieces. Right. Like right. a good chance in Japan, they just haven't even heard to say no to it. Exactly. Right. That is, and that is the 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 difference of a Christian. And then we people would say, well, Europe is getting post-Christian. You have some of the coasts and in, in the US are becoming post-Christian. Yeah. Um, and Japan is pre-Christian. There has never been the great awakening in Japan, the quick flyover of Japanese history, because that's what everyone tuned in here for. Yeah. Uh, is that in the 1500s, uh, Catholic missionaries show up. There's a Christian century where in 50 years, um, they had 300,000 converts. The population of Japan wow. at that time, was, which is staggering, right? Yeah. It's actually massive success. Um, the first uh, missionary, Francis Xavier, he was, he was writing back uh, to Rome and telling telling his readers it. like this is the perfect people group. These are the best disciples in the world. They're serious. Man. They're dedicated. It's going to be amazing. And then massive persecution broke out, and that number just went totally mm. to nothing. Uh, there was some underground hidden Christians for a while, but yeah, um, it, it during that time with the Christian century, uh, the population of Japan was twenty million. So it never reached two percent of the population. It never reached that critical mass where you'd see a tipping point of momentum. Yeah. And so then there's other little surges of Protestants coming in the end, end of the 1800s. You have uh, post-World War II, a lot of missionaries showed up. But in none, none of those waves resulted in, 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 the, in the church getting up past uh, that 1%, 2% mark. Yeah. And so when we're, you know, I always tell people, don't pray for revival in Japan. 
there's there's no past vitality to revive. Hmm. That we are praying for the first great awakening in Japan. Okay. That's that's what we're wanting. Well, that's a great transition talking about prayer talking today. About prayer. Yeah. So so I'm sure prayer p- played into the journey of you yeah. landing in Japan. So maybe maybe trying to connect those dots of how does a kid from <laughs> Oklahoma, Colorado, and Denver fan, uh, Missouri, Southern Missouri, end up going, hey, I, I feel like God is leading me to go plant churches, right? Because yeah. that's what you guys do, right? Which yeah. if you're not, Mustard Seed is about planting churches that make disciples, which is that's why— it. Again, I think uh, one of the missions that we support here at Quad City is because that's what our mission is. That's mm, mm-hmm. We're about making disciples, and we believe that will change our community as well. So right. how did that happen, that journey just kind of yeah. landing there in the short version of like, hey, how did we get there? Right. So, you know, you can – you always look back and you see God, you know, orchestrating things yeah. in, in yeah. his way where um, – yeah, I, from a small town, it's funny. It's like, I say Joplin, Missouri. I went to Webb City High School. It's like, which is like outside of Joplin, you know? Um, so, uh, yes, it, it, not not an urban context at all. However, I had I had a mentor throughout junior high and high school who intentionally took us to urban centers. It took us on little mission trips. Like, we're going to Chicago. We're going to D.C. We're going to New York. Mm. Um, and when I went and visited those places, I was like, this is, this is important. This matters. And I like this. This is, this is fascinating. Um, and so, you know, urban ministry, we were just, we were just talking over coffee this morning. Urban ministry, um, in the States looks very different. Often you're, you're, you're reaching out to the urban poor. Right. And so, you know, that was a lot of those, those trips. Um, and then when I was in Bible college, I think I was I was having this stirring of like where are the pockets of greatest resistance where mm. where are we not seeing the gospel and what if what if uh, we had a ton of Christians all crammed into one place and these guys came and said hey what about this vision of unreached urban church planting and at that point they didn't even have Japan figured out actually I really? was I was recruited to Japan by them saying uh, what do you think about planting a church in Bangkok Thailand and I was like sounds great. <laughs> we should do that. You know, um, it's urban, it's unreached. Yeah. There's tons of non-Christians there. We can do church planning. Great. Let's do that. Um, when they asked me that I was a sophomore in Bible college, I literally had like a wedding ring and engagement ring in my backpack. So I was like, didn't I know have, anything. That's, that's when <laughs> we all go. a few things to take care yeah. of first. That's when we all go do uh, crazy things. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, I was like, let me get back to you. Um, we were going into our senior year and that, that vision had formed, into, hey, if we're really doing unreached, it's got to be Japan. At that time, is the largest unreached people group. Okay. And its population has decreased. Bangladesh has increased. Yeah. So Bangladesh is now the largest unreached people group in the world. Okay. Um, if we're really going to do urban, uh, it's got to be Japan. I mean, three of the top 20 largest cities in the world are in Japan. Um, you know, Japan is just I mean, it's well over 50% urban and it's really? over 60% urban now. So we're trying to plant these 12 churches now. I'm fast forwarding, right? Yeah. We're trying to plant 12 churches in these 12 cities in Japan. If we get those 12 churches established, 62% of Japan will be within reach of the gospel at one of our churches. That's awesome. Just because of these urban centers where people are flocking there. Yeah. Um, and it's just part of Japan's layout. Um, over 70% is mountainous and you can't and uninhabitable. Uh, and so people so it forces are all you, packed together along forces the coasts. you into these cities. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, it had become this vision for unreached urban church planting meant Japan. And it is an open country. People have asked that. Is this like China where it's closed? Do you have to? No. Uh, we went in on religious worker visas. Hmm. Um, I tell people I'm a pastor. We're planting a church. It's not underground. And so, you know, it was, there's a lot of different missionaries where they do different things. Um, Things I'm not trained to do. Yeah. You know, an engineer building bridges, dig- digging wells, uh, you know, doctors doing medical work, s- establishing a school. Nobody wants me to start a school or a hospital <laughs> in Japan. Right? So I'm like, I yeah. got a, you know, a bachelor's in Bible. So I am, you know, um, we're, we're there to do church, to do church work yeah, and, awesome. and preach and teach. So. Yeah. Yeah. How was, so in that season, just trying to make sense, I know yesterday you used some interesting 
language about requests. Like a lot of mm. prayers are requests. Mm. So what did that look like in that college season? Was it, I'm sure a lot of requests of like, God, make this yeah. known. Obviously, you know, you're trying to figure out, you know, I think so much of our, especially for believers, like, like we genuinely want to know sometimes. And yeah. then maybe sometimes we're not feel like we're hearing God speak to us or yeah. like, yeah. how did you know when it was like, Oh, this is it. Like this is, it's Japan. Yeah. It's interesting. The story, um, because, uh, we usually say, well, the way that God said, go to Japan was Matthew 28. Hmm. I said, you know, <laughs> go make disciples of all nations. Yeah. And we're, which nation has the least disciples? Hmm. Um, so it wasn't, it's, it's interesting where some people are ready for like, give me this story about you had a dream of a samurai and he was telling you and, <laughs> yeah. and it was like, there no. wasn't anything like that. Yeah. Um, you know, I didn't see the Japanese flag somewhere in my yeah. cereal or anything like that or that wouldn't be hard, but, um, you know, it's, um, it was just, uh, simply looking at the Bible and going, okay, how do we obey this? Yeah. And, um, here's an opportunity. So. Yeah. You know, I've heard, I've heard some, I've heard, uh, Tim Keller to be one to say, you look at the, you look at the Bible, you look at the world's needs and mm-hmm. you look at the giftings you have and find where do they all intersect? Yeah. Okay. What, what is, what is the unique role that God has for me in the body of Christ? What, what needs are, do, do I see that I could, that I could possibly meet in the world? And then does this align with what the Bible is telling us with what God is telling us in scripture? And mm-hmm. so all those things were there. And then the. Uh, just the opportunity that was that was playing yeah. in front of us. Yeah. That's that's what led to it. Um, yeah. You know, and my main thing in in college, if we talk about you know um, prayer, um, was I was leading a youth group. You know, yeah. And so someone had you know taught me a long time ago make a prayer list, and so my first prayer list consisted of all the names of junior high and high school kids in Cassville, Missouri. Hmm. And, um, you know, uh, going through that and praying for those students to be transformed, to be like Jesus. And then, well, when you're praying for that, then you're praying for the world. Yeah. And so then you're, you're saying, Hey, let's, let's pray for these countries. Um, let's, let's pray for these lost people. Let's pray for Muslim countries. Let's pray for yeah. Buddhists. Let's pray for, let's pray for these places. And then as you start to pray that God would move in a place like Japan, yeah, in a place like, you know, Iraq, which is another place where we had a team saying, Hey, well, are you interested in this? And we were kind of like, yeah, that's an interesting thing too. Yeah. So when you start to pray for that, um, you start to say, well, man, you know, you're asking God fit that need. And then you're like, I think I'm now the- I care about it. <laughs> yeah. <right? laughs> yeah. It's like, I've heard someone say the easiest person to mobilize is yourself. Yeah. Um, and so you're praying for God to mobilize people. And you, I think, I think that, that we should be the, you're you you're it yeah instead of praying god save them god, <laughs> right. use me to say right, right. like that's the yeah. you know we talked about making more disciples was that is most of our prayers are well god save so and so and it should be well god give me the the, the conversations opportunity. and opportunities yeah. to save so and so well man, that's really cool so obviously we talked about prayer yesterday um you know there are a couple of things that really loved um in that I thought you did a great job you know i love the reminder that we are talking to God, yeah, like the creator of all things, not bro God. Yeah. Like I love that you, you know, you said that. My kids have gotten into this little habit of like, hey, bro. I'm like, I'm not your bro. I'm your dad. <laughs> we can be bros later, but right now I'm your dad. I'm not your bro because like, yeah, I'm not your friend. <laughs> mm-hmm. Like I'm not saying that like like God is not God is not my friend. He is God. We talked about the same thing when we talked yeah. about just reading the word that the creator of the universe wants to have a relationship with us. Yeah. You yeah. Know, if we could start there. Yeah. I think it could change some things. Well, and to hold those things in tension of, yes, God is the loving father that we can approach boldly. Yes. And majestic, powerful, holy holds all things together. Yes. And you kind of look and say, well, which one is missing? If because it's it's best if we're holding these two things mm, in tension. Um, in Japan, I actually might emphasize the other side. Really? Of you know, we have a pretty Japan that does a pretty good job of of looking up to authority. Yeah. You know, and so the idea of God being unapproachable or God being holy and powerful, you know, kind of need to say yes, He is, 
powerful and you can only approach him through the blood of Jesus. However, he loves you. He is ready to welcome you as his child. Yes. You can go to him anytime. That that seems to be the other side of the tension that that we need to bring out over there. I just have an inkling that when when we're over here, that's very we, true. We've gone towards we've this, gone the other way. Yeah, yeah. We reject all authority. Buddies. Yeah, yeah. 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 He yeah. is my Jesus is my homie. Yeah, yeah. Right? The yeah. He's not, he's not my homie. <laughs> he's not he's like he's not my friend. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. he is like, like yeah. you say, he is there for me, but it's so so different. Yeah. So I love that you started there because I do think that then impacts how I would pray. Right, right. You know, if it's my friend, my requests are probably a lot feeble. Or if, if I really believe I'm praying to the thing that's holding all, to the God who's holding all things together, I'm probably more bold. Right. And, you know, all of the things that, it's all from my own life, right? Where I can know, I know, and sometimes I catch myself and I just, you know, I catch myself saying things. I'm like, I'm not even thinking about who I'm talking to right now. Mm. Um, or the, the way I just said that, you know, I, I realize I, I didn't, I didn't, I wasn't considering that those words are going to God right now. Okay. Yeah. Let me, let me re, let me reapproach this. Okay. If I realize I'm talking to God, um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna choose my words. I'm going to think about this. Yeah. Um, you know, we, we get, we get intimidated when we talk to certain people, we would, we think about our words in a job interview or, yeah. or you know, um, okay, you're going to get to go talk to this, this, this dig, you know, this, this dignified person or whatever. Um, and you really think about it. So how do I, how do I think about that? And at the same time, like hold the tension of, of, of God calling us into this very intimate, close relationship. Right. Um, and where he is gentle and lowly in heart and says, come to me. Yeah. Okay. This is, this is an amazing thing. Yeah. Um, and so I'm going to be able to go to him anytime, but also think, okay, I'm talking to a king. Let's make sure I'm addressing him and not just only thinking, am I saying what, who else he is wants listening to, yeah. to me? Who else wants, is, who is yeah. overhearing this and like right. judging the prayer or whatever? Yeah. Um, let me make sure that I'm, you know, saying what they would expect me to say, not mm. ruffling feathers. Okay. No, think about the fact that we're talking to God. So yeah, yeah, that's that's a big piece of it that for for me, um, and you know, I was telling you, there's there's plenty of things that we're throwing out there that we would love to be able to chase down. I yeah. remember a professor a long time ago pointing out to me that there's or to the class that there's very few times in the Bible where prayer is not out loud. I thought that was fascinating. Huh. Uh, now there's a few, right? So you can't say and and you know, so when Paul says uh, pray without ceasing. Clearly, he's talking about then a, a, a you know an in your head or an in your heart right. kind of um, I'm praying to God and God knows my thoughts so I could pray to Him silently. So clearly, that's there. So yes. don't don't throw it out, people. Yeah. Don't throw it out. <laughs> um, and you have the uh, uh, Hannah's prayer, First Samuel says she's like kind of moving her lips. You know, she's barely moving her lips, yeah. uh, almost not audible. Okay, so th- those things are there, um, but. Uh, by and large, we're saying you form words, you speak to God, yeah. um, and and that's that's kind of the default way to think about this. I know for myself, once again, it's just what's been helpful for me over the years is when I think about having to form sentences out loud, I think about my words more, yeah, um, and it helps me pray more. I, yeah. I, I when I'm. I'm artic- and w- you force yourself to say, I have this emotion in me. And so I could just kind of sit in prayer and feel whatever it is, burden for a friend. But when I have to say out loud, Father, please help my friend to give up that, that idol of, of security and money, whatever it would be. Yeah. Um, okay. I didn't even know that's what I was feeling a burden about until I had to speak it out loud. And, yeah. And you gave it words. Now I do. I don't have this one pulled open. But let's see how fast we can find it. Um, we also know that our words are not good, right? Our words mm-hmm. are never as they should be. But this is the good news about the Holy Spirit's work, right? Romans eight twenty six. Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know what to pray for as we ought. So we're trying to speak out loud. We're trying to form right. these sentences. We're trying to say these things um, in the language that God is. Has, has given us that we learn from our from our moms and dads 
right? Yeah. And we're trying to speak to God, but we know that it falls short of actually being articulate and fitting to God. So we don't know how we should pray as we ought. But the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groanings too deep for words. So sometimes people read this as like, we're the ones groaning. It's, eh, it's actually not what's happening. <laughs> it's, it's the spirit who's groaning yeah. to God and taking our messy prayers and saying, I, I, okay, let me help you there. I know what you mean to say. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which is, it's, uh, it's interesting just, you know, living and working in Japan, you know, um, there's times where I'll, I'll be in a meeting with some with one of our Japanese teammates. So right now we're in this building campaign. So we may, we're, we're working on a building project, and I'm talking to, you know, an architect or whatever, and I'll say something, and they'll be like, "I can't, I, I think I get you," you know, in my Japanese, right? <laughs> um, and and uh, I'm trying to figure out how to use you know construction terms in in Japanese, you know, yeah. whatever, and yeah. all this. I think I get you, and then one of my Japanese teammates sitting there will say what I said better. And they're like, ah, now I really get you. And I think that's kind of what f- f- the same thing that's happening, right? Where um, you're not translating me from English to Japanese. You're taking my messy Japanese, my yeah. best Japanese I got for this for yeah. this situation, and you're putting into, into good words. And then I think this is what the Spirit's doing. We're, we're trying to pray to God as best we can. And the spirit comes alongside and says, this is what he actually meant to say. Yeah, because he knows uh, us, knows yeah, our, yeah. Oh yeah, our deepest, deepest longings. Exactly. Yeah. And, and you know, their heart, if they really understood everything about God and the universe, this is what they would be praying right now. Mm-hmm. I'm going to make these groanings that are too deep for words, that surpass and go deeper than what human languages can even express. Yeah, that's These really good. Deep thoughts Man, that's for awesome. Monday yeah. morning. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's great. No, it's great. That's what our people love. Um, uh, so anything else? Anything else that you were like, man, if I had 15, 20 more minutes, right, um, I would have loved to have shared this. You know, always as we're teaching and preaching, there's things we come across, but you just can't add it all. So right. you have to keep, you got to, yeah, you do got to land the plane. So what's something that maybe you wish you could have added in but you knew like, oh, it'll take me way too long and I right. don't have that much more time. Right. I think, you know, there's a few things coming to my mind. One is just the the kind of the walkthrough of, of prayer. It almost feels like um, it's helpful just to say, could we, could we actually do a test flight, you know? Mm. Um, but, you know, I tried to do as much of that as I could of read some scripture, hear God speak through the word. Then it's, uh, let me reply in prayer back. I usually also try to read a psalm. Okay, that's good. Or, uh, as a here's worship. So we talked about that acts, adoration, confession, thanksgiving, supplication. The adoration part. Okay. Uh, there are times where it's not a psalm. I'll actually literally pull up the the words of a hymn, you know, mm. and read or sing if you're really in private. You're like, yeah, oh, I don't sing. Yeah. Uh, so you know, um, you know, read these words, read this psalm as worship to God. So make sure that adoration piece is there or some of the worship hymns of Revelation that you're going to find in Revelation 5 and 4 and 5 and uh, 15, 19. There's this, they're scattered throughout the book of Revelation. There's some good just pieces to to read to God as worship Hmm. and then say, okay, now I'm going into, do I need to confess? What can I say thank you for? Uh, what, What sins do I need to make sure if, do I need to confess this? Do I need to confess this to someone else? Do I need to get on the phone right now yeah. and say, pause in uh, in the prayer time? Mm. Hey, I got to confess uh, to someone. I, I think I gossiped the other day, and I shouldn't have said that. Yeah. Okay. Um, now let's now let's get on to the prayer list of of requests, and that's one of the main things that <laughs> yeah you know I talked about, and I feel like also it's like, hey kind of got to back that up. What do you, what do you mean by this is, you know, mainly requests? Um, you know, I think, I think if we scan scripture, we're going to see, like I said, the worship, the confession, the Thanksgiving, but by and large, there's a lot of asking God. In fact, you know, the, the old English for pray is like, I ask you, you know, pray, tell, please tell me, yeah. you know, it just, that's the, the meaning of the word pray is we're asking God yeah. something. So, you know, I just pulled up one example, um, first Timothy two, where it says, first of all, I urge that supplications, uh, these, these requests, prayers, 
intercessions and thanksgivings. So it's all there. Yeah. Be made for all people. Uh, so just one, it's just another place where we see this idea of when you're going to God, you're, you're asking God to do things. If you look at the prayers of the apostle Paul, that are just scattered throughout. You're going to find him praying for churches constantly. Yeah. Um. And and praying for, and if you if someone's saying, "Hey, I, I want to know what to pray for, for people, for fellow Christians," it's, um, you know, Colossians one nine. And so from the day we heard, we have not ceased to pray for you, asking that you may be filled with the knowledge of His will. Yeah. Have you asked God? You know. Fill my fellow church members with a knowledge of your will in all spiritual wisdom and understanding. Why? So as to walk in a manner worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing to him, bearing fruit in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. These are all requests. And here comes another one in verse 11. May you be strengthened with all power according to his glorious might for all endurance and patience with joy. And it continues on, but it's like, this is how he's praying for a church. It's a bunch of requests for their spiritual maturity, for their walk in Christ. Um, this is how we can pray for the church in Japan, uh, for Quad City Christian Church, yeah. for, for churches scattered around the country and around the world. We're praying for Christians um, to grow and be fruitful. And Paul then over and over again, at the end of Romans and the end of Ephesians, he's saying, oh yeah, pray for me. Yeah, don't forget. Yeah. <laughs> pray for me, Include I need help. Me. Yeah, I yeah. Need Colossians, yeah, he does it too. Pray that I may proclaim this word boldly. There you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah for sure. Yeah, so... I think that's that that's a just a big piece that you kind of sit back and wonder if a church, you know, really caught fire for intercession, for their context, for their family, for their city, for the world, man, what happens? You know, mm. um, if we had a couple thousand more people, um, you know, praying, uh, what what is what does God do in response to those requests? Right. So. And there's something to that language piece you talked on earlier, like actually, whether that's, you know, I've seen in my own life, writing it down has been helpful. Obviously, mm. Paul, here's written down, right? He said out loud, some scribe wrote it down for him. Right. Um, but there's a an app that I use, and one of the the things that it does, it walks through, um, we do the the pray acronym. So pause, reflect, ask, nice. yield. Um, yeah. So it's another one, much like, you know, the yeah. acts. Um, but interesting always in the um, the reflect and the ask piece so it always starts really personal mm -hmm. um you know what did god telling you but they always then go like today's was uh how can you um pray for your church uh, to know and discern the will of god to move amongst the community like yeah. and name it it's like and then it's like hey who do you know right now who needs healing yeah like so there's a couple of things it always does for me is number one, it, it forces me to think of someone. And then if I don't right. have it off the top of my head, I'm like, I'm not, what am I wrong with me? Right. I should know who should I be praying for that needs healing or, you know, yeah. let's pray for um, a couple of weeks ago was just talking about some of the orphans and kids all around the world. Mm -hmm. And it was like, pray for mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. Like put some, like some images in your head. So it's so great that it, because again, like you said, just kind of loosely in my thoughts is one thing, but now I'll say, no, 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 give names to yeah. this thing you're praying for. It does make it so much more real yeah. for yeah. me. And we could just, I mean, to to we could be exploring the uh, the prayer passages of the Bible for forever, right? But I think so. You know, yeah. Thinking, looking at uh, Luke 11 is another great one where Jesus is talking about just imploring God. And then you got the the, the parable of the persistent widow mm. just constantly begging the, the judge for justice. And then, uh, which is just this interesting thing of Jesus saying, uh, ask the same thing over and over and over again. Mm. What an interesting parable to say, uh, keep on pestering God with your request. Yeah. And, you know, we all, oh, hey, God already knows. I don't need to. No, no. Uh, right. Jesus is Jesus is the one. Jesus is God. He can tell us how to talk to God. This yeah. is, and he says, bring the same thing up to God over and over and over again, and ask for these for these things to be done. Yeah, that's awesome. So, if you were a brand new believer, right? So, uh, or just trying to reengage in the faith, like we've had a lot of people um, over this series who are trying to implement some of these disciplines. Yeah. Um, because, you know, by and large, these aren't a lot of things people are doing. 
Um, prayer is one of the ones that's interesting because we do say the maybe the prayer before dinner or maybe the the nighttime prayer or the you know the prayer when we're in desperation. Right. Like, please save this person. Um, but by and large, maybe not a thing that we're doing consistently. Right. It's not a not a discipline. It's not a habit that we've formed. Right. But we're going, okay, you I'm convicted. Yeah, I, I I need to do this more. Hmm. Obviously, Jesus talked about it, so it seems like it's a big deal. Um, right. What would that look like practically? How would you help people, um, again, just who are new to this, to go, hey, these are the things you need to do. This is what I've done. And, hey, here are some just things that I've seen in my own life just where I've been successful or even – Hey, this is where I failed. Yeah. And some encouragement even within that. Yeah. Uh, well, I think you were on to to one of those things, um, which is uh, being at church helps you to get to know the needs in the community. You know, mm-hmm. you're talking about now I know someone who needs healing. Now I know someone who needs help. Um, and I, I want to, I want people here to be in, encouraged because uh, I, I had two people come up and pray for me yesterday. It's awesome. Uh, I also witnessed out of the corner of my eye other people putting a hand on a shoulder and praying for someone there. Um, that's something we've worked to have at our church culture in Tokyo. Uh, mm. Just at the sun, you guys have great spaces. You have <laughs> outside spaces, indoor yeah. spaces, pe- places where people can mingle around and talk to each other. We're told to pray for one another. Our one another in mm. the Bible is the church, right? So, uh, uh, that's, I mean, step one is if you're a new believer, goodness, be here physically, mm. talking to people, rubbing shoulders with people so that you can say, hey, how'd that thing go the other day? Yeah. How are you? Um, what's happened in your life? Hey, you look troubled, oh, whatever it would be, and continue that culture of, well, hey, can I pray for you? Yeah. It doesn't take long. Put a hand on someone's shoulder yeah. um, and use Sunday. To, to, to really pray for people, but that will fuel your prayer list for the rest of the week. Yeah. Cause now you know, okay, I, I prayed for Bob on Sunday and I, you know, I know yeah. Bob was struggling with a job. Okay. Now I'm praying for Bob's job <laughs> for the rest of the week. And now I yeah. get to see them the next week and ask them. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So is who is your one another? It's that this is why, this is why being a part of a local church is so huge is, yeah. is, um, you, you're there and you're able to ask people and you're able to do that. And so, you know, like I said, I saw it happening. I mean, I, I know that everyone here on staff would love if that happened more and more and more and more yep. um, for, for Sunday to be a time where everyone says, you know, if I go, I know I'm going to be able to minister to others mm. and I'm going to be able to, to be ministered to myself. And so uh, step one, just be there and have, have your head on a swivel for, <laughs> Who needs? Yeah, who needs it? Because there's prayer. a lot of yeah. people who, if you're just watching, yeah, and looking and have that, and part of that is asking God uh, as I'm coming here. Yeah, God, open my eyes. Yeah, so I can see. Instead of I'm just coming to do the thing, I'm yeah. actually coming prepared to to do my part in this. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, we talked yesterday about the three things: the other practical piece, right? Of uh, the the time place plan. Yeah. Um. You know, for some people say, okay, I'm going to turn over a new leaf of, of praying every day for the rest of my life can feel like a really big deal. That is, right? yeah. Um, Especially a new person. Right. They're so, like, wait a minute, hold yeah. on. Let's so, back that up. <laughs> <laughs> if someone needs to say, my goal for Tuesday now, because we're yeah. doing this on a Monday, whatever it is, for tomorrow is I'm going to, I'm going to do this one day. Um, now hopefully that's not, that's not all. Um, but you say, I'm going to do this one day yeah. and then, uh, you say, I'm going to do this for a week. I'm going to do this for 30 days. If you get that 30 day thing going, yeah. um, you're getting pretty close to a habit. Yeah. Um, and, and, and digging into that habit. Um, and we need habits. Um, you know, I know this is what this whole spiritual discipline stuff, this is what this is about, you know, is, um, you know, building in habits, um, and, uh, read a great book, uh, years ago, um, uh, called you are what you love talking about, um, the idea that we, we need these habits built into our lives because it makes us love things. It makes mm. us love prayer. Um, and the author James Smith used this, 
uh, illustration of people who jog, which I don't, <laughs> uh, but people who exercise, people who work out, whatever it is, um, if they don't do it, then for a few days, they get antsy. Yeah. Uh, when you first start jogging, right, you hate it. And you hate it for the first week. You hate it yeah. for the first two weeks, the first three weeks. And if you jog for four or five months and then you go on vacation or something, you travel for business and you can't, you just, oh, goodness, I just, yeah. just got to go for a run. Yeah. Um, because a habit was built into where now you love jogging. And it's like, the same is going to be true for going to church every Sunday. Yeah. Uh, the same is going to be true for, for uh, a, a life of prayer. Well, you start to feel like I need that time alone with God. Um, I've begun to love it. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I think we often make that mistake of just waiting for God to zap us with a desire for this mm. and uh, say, go backwards, Yeah. start the practice and let the desire come after that's that. That's really good. I, yeah, that's really good. I'm sitting here thinking of like, well, that's, you know, it's not my gifting. I, I can't pray. Right, right, right. <laughs> like, you know, but it's probably, it does come out of the, just what you experience in that moment. Um, and you keep showing up, right? right? Like I think right. that's a part of it, right? Even when you don't feel like it, right? Going to the gym and doing all those things is you keep doing it even when the days you don't want to. Right, right. Um, and it's really hard and um, you're frustrated and you're not experiencing yeah. maybe what you feel like you should be experiencing. Maybe that's something too, just talking through that just really briefly is I think we have these expectations uh. of – okay, God, I'm doing my part, like, and you're not doing yours. And as a new believer, you can become discouraged. Just like reading the word. You're, right. you're starting to be all up reading the word, but you're not feeling or experiencing anything. Right. And so that may happen with prayer too, especially if your prayers and requests maybe aren't getting answered. Sure. So how do we battle that? Or how do we just keep that in mind to, to keep yes. going? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And that expectation of, Am I going to have a tingly feeling? Am I going to have a good experience? Am I going to have a mountaintop experience every time? And uh, no, yeah. <laughs> uh, you 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 keep doing it though. Yeah, um, believing one, you are really talking to God. You are yeah. really experiencing time with God. Um, and I'll advocate for the morning. Even I'll get a little more <laughs> specific. Yeah, uh, any time of the day is great. Any time of the day is great. But. Um, I'm going to butcher the quote, but Hudson Taylor says, don't uh, play your symphony first and then tune your instrument. Hmm. Uh, start your day getting in tune with God and then go about that business. Yeah. Um, uh, working for God for the rest of the day. I butchered the quote. Google it. Oh. Uh, Hudson Taylor. So, <laughs> uh, But just that idea of the first thing we do is we tune up. And the first thing we do in the day is, uh, you know, I'm going to pray. As I pray, I'm going to align myself more. Yep. When I'm starting to ask God, hallowed be your name, may your kingdom come, may your will be done. Give us just today. Or, you know, when I'm making these yeah. requests, that informs my values. That shapes my values of what I'm hoping for for the rest of the day. It's going to be pretty hard to beg God uh, to be glorified, you know, and, and then later throughout the rest of the day, live for money or whatever it would be. Yeah. Um, uh, so doing it no matter what, and knowing that it's going to be a lot like the way that we know we we need to be there for our kids. We need to be there for our spouses. Um, every time you go spend time with your spouse, are you going to have like tingly romantic feelings? No. Eh, no. Okay, Probably wait. not. <laughs> <laughs> but, but you know, we need to check in. I need to find out how your heart is. I need yeah. to care about you. I need to show you that I'm here. Yep. Um, and every now and through that, through cultivating that, the likelihood that you do have some of those times where you're like, wow, we are really still truly in love after all these years, that will happen every now and then. Yeah. Um, and, you know, with our kids, you cannot microwave that, you know, like, well, hey, dad's here for five minutes, deep, deep connection time. It's like, no, yeah. it's through always being present. Yeah. And then every now and then you'll have one of those where it's like, this was a really, really good um, time together. Man, I love you know? that. That's a great, great reminder. You know, the, the Lord's Prayer is interesting. I had, saw something um, not too long ago about it. And so many of us is like, hey, this isn't a beginning prayer. This is like, you can do this the rest of your life. Right. It's not like, oh, I don't, you don't know how to pray. We'll pray this way. But then eventually you'll graduate to something more in depth. Like, the, I love <laughs> yeah. how you're like, we can always just pray 
this prayer. Right. It wasn't just like when I was six, that's the only thing I used. Like this can be a part of your rhythm, especially if you don't have that habit. Right. It can help structure. I think that's a lot of things too. If you're, you know, ADD and your brain goes all over the place, this does right. give you some rails to stay within that are really helpful, I think, for right. people. They're saying the exact words of the Lord's Prayer with a lot of people have done, which is great. Yeah. Clearly when Jesus says pray like this, cool, do it. Yeah. But it also sometimes uh, works as that outline. Yeah. You know, the the broad outline of, uh, you know, I mean, I'll mean, i give you a really uh, funny, uh, almost embarrassing example of, of just recently yeah. um, uh, where, you know, uh, Caitlin and I graduated 2003. Two weeks ago, we went to my high school reunion and this past week we went to her high school reunion. <laughs> so you're getting ready for, I'm getting ready to go see people I haven't seen for 20 years. Yeah. I know this is going to be a weird experience, you know. Very weird. Um, all of that. Um, and when start the day with father in heaven, hallowed be your name. And I never thought of that in light of a high school reunion, but the day that I had a high school reunion and I prayed that I'm like, you know, I've not thought of making God's name hallowed at this thing yet. I had only thought of, hmm. boy, I hope I don't seem so, or who's going to be there. Who's going to be super weird. What's, what's going to happen? You know, and it's like, what if I thought of now the high school reunion in terms hmm. of may you be glorified. And if there's any chance for me to say something to somebody that would that would glorify your name god even at something silly like a high school reunion then great and i would have never anticipated how it would be your name to be applied <laughs> yes <laughs> to a 20th reunion yeah uh but but it was and it impacted me and it helped me go into that situation and with a different mindset that's you know? so great yeah. yeah that's so awesome well as we kind of end what's and how can we be praying for mustard seed in your family? So how can we add that to our list of yeah. prayers um, uh, that we're just asking? Maybe we yeah. keep like the persistent widow. We're just going to yeah. keep showing up and see what happens. Because, yeah, we do have some 2,000 people. So what if 2,000 people started praying for Japan? What could yeah. that look like? So what could we be praying for in this next season for you guys? Um yeah, goodness. Uh, get the notepad out and start scribbling this down. But you can have. I would. I would really just ask for you know. Pray for our team. Uh, we need a growing team. We need more people to plant more churches. Protection for our team. Um, that's big. You know, all these churches. There's always time to pray for those churches. Like I said, uh, see what Paul prayed for churches and pray that for us. Mm. Very specific things. Um, you know, we 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 go. We fly back tomorrow. Um, yeah. And uh, another school year starts for for our kids, but that means another school year starts for Caitlin. She's an elementary music teacher at this at this international school where it's because it's a Christian school. She gets the opportunity to influence students in Japan. Um, you know, pray for you know her energy for that. Any every school teacher uh, who's listening knows what I'm talking about. <laughs> when you're ramping up yes. uh, for that new school year. Um, so, you know, that, that endurance and energy there, the big thing for the church in Tokyo is, uh, we've been growing and we're trying to raise money, um, for this new space in the largest city in the world. And so we're trying to raise a lot of money for that. Um, and, uh, pray for the, the provision that we could have the money to, to renovate that space and then get in. We're trying to get in and start using it in November. Okay. And, um, uh, just that that would be a great tool for seeing more and more people uh, come and hear about Jesus. So those are some of our concrete requests. Um, and I, yeah, I appreciate all prayers about this. Yeah. If I was to, to throw on one more item about prayer that we yeah. can never talk about enough, but you know, it's, it's implicit in some of the things we're talking about, but implicit is not implicit is not good enough. Um, which is just making sure that as we pursue spiritual disciplines, we're always aware of that idea that we're saved by grace through faith, not saved by grace through prayer life. Yep. You know, um, this is not a way to earn uh, your way into to God's family. Um, there's not these different classes of, of children of God. Um, I appreciated Jason, Jason's comment comments at the end of like, the more you mature, the more you're going to feel like I need to grow in this. Um, yeah. that, and, um, reminding ourselves of, of that gospel truth that we're saved by grace is huge. Yeah. Um, and so it brings it back to, well, if I'm already saved, why am I doing this? Like, you're doing it to love God yep. 
you're doing it to delight in, in God's presence yeah. and we're doing it to then see God do great things both here and around the world. So I'm thankful yeah. for the way that the church is praying for us. Well, yeah, man, we're grateful. And that, we did talk about that in the very beginning, that first one, these aren't how we earn God's love. Mm. These, it's how we enjoy it. You know, right. as the quote we used. And so Very just good. that reminder and these spiritual disciplines are forming us for the sake of others. Mm. So that's why, don't forget, this prayer isn't just asked for us, mm. but it also is for other people. People that, man, we don't know. People that we may never meet um, all the way across the world in Japan, but we have the opportunity to ask God to move on their behalf. And yeah. it is an honor to partner with brothers and sisters across the globe to see yeah. God move in ways that, it's going to change countries and families yeah. forever. And so man, great for you guys, for your work. Um, Thank you. Obviously praying for safe travels tomorrow. And just, I know that's a lot with four kids. <laughs> and so I definitely don't envy that at all, bro, but thanks for being here, man. We always enjoy you sharing with us and grateful to kind of do this in this setting. So people could hear more of just your heart. Um, I think just your love of the word and just love of people and pastor and definitely is clear. So grateful that we're uh, partners in this work together to grow the kingdom. We're thankful too. Thank yeah, you. man. We'll talk to you guys next time. We got one more installment here um, for our variety pack. Um, so next week we're going to be uh, attacking, um, unpacking uh, silence and solitude. So that'll be a really fun one. So you're going to want to make sure you're there Sunday and then catch our final podcast of variety pack till then talk soon.